Hello again and welcome into another edition of Inside Tiger Football brought to you by Rib Crib. I'm Adam Hildebrandt, joined by Broken Arrow head coach Josh Blankenship. And coach, uh, coming into a week against Owasso, 1-1 one one off of the Union game last week. And that game, uh, as, as much as football can be, was kind of a game of runs. Union jumped out early, the Tigers came storming back, and then Union was able to, to close it out late. Uh, what do you think are, is a lesson that, that your team took from that game? Because they were able to, to clearly show some fight and climb back into that one and give themselves a chance there in the second half. Yeah, a lot of lessons, uh, positive and negative. Um, the negative, um, you know, our experience uh, in big moments, big game, big environment. Uh, we didn't handle it well to start. Uh, we didn't handle it, honestly, all the way through. Uh, that's fixable stuff, stuff that we've been addressing uh, as a team. Uh, the positive is despite all that, we feel like we should have won the game. You know, we had an opportunity to win it. We had that big uh, interception. Uh, return down into their territory, uh, and then a, a shot to, you know, our guy, uh, and we didn't finish the deal there. Um, opportunities, even despite all the negative, uh, we had a chance to, to win the game at their place. And uh, uh, the other positive, and we'll probably talk about this more, but, uh, you know, we go to Texas, we go on the road to Union, we go on the road to Owasso. Um, you know, we talk about wanting to make a run for a championship. Well, this is a rehearsal for the playoffs. Um, you know, it's non-district, but, you know, how often do you get that back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back, uh, gauntlet, um, which is what you're going to see in the playoffs. So we uh, relish this opportunity and what we've got and uh, got to keep getting better. You know, even though uh, it went the other way at the end, did you get the sense that getting that, you know, you got that pick, as you mentioned, you had the opportunity in the end zone. Do you get the sense that the guys walked away with the feeling of, even if we're in a hole, we are capable of digging out of it? Uh, I think it was assumed, uh, leaving the game, uh, okay. that we know what we are. Um, we, we welcome adversity. Uh, you know, that was our challenge in the beginning of the summer was how are we going to handle adversity? Um, that's something we're clearly capable of handling. Um, what we walked away from was, we felt like we gave it away. Um, and I know the union folks wouldn't feel the same way. You know, it was hard earned on their end. Uh, but from our end, we feel like we uh, had an opportunity to win the game and we, we didn't take advantage of it. In the, in the early moments of that game, when union was kind of making their run, what, uh, what were they doing? What, what were you guys not doing to, to be able to kind of hang that closer at the beginning? And, and what did you take from that? Uh, it's kind of cliche, but it was a, Big environment, uh, you know, they got their strobe lights, you know, they got the noise. We got the awesome crowd that we had on our side. We got both bands. Um, you know, it was our first game for a lot of our guys in a big environment. And it took them a while to settle in and lock in on their jobs as opposed to being consumed by the environment. So I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, that experience is something that will add to our maturity. You look at uh, Griffin Steber over the course of that game and another solid game throwing the football. Uh, again, it looked like even, you know, he had some missed throws, but it looked like he was making the right reads and getting the ball or trying to get the ball to the right guys. What do you think of him on Friday? A uh, mixture of everything that I've said. You know, it took him a minute to settle in. Um, once he settled in, he was what uh, we saw the previous week, which is, uh, uh, like Fuller has mentioned, uh, some of the old line that really – uh, love the fact that he's a guy that's blocked with them in, in, them in the trenches, and now he's the guy pulling the trigger. But he'll stand in there and take a shot, um, which is not what we coach him to do is take <laughs> shots. But, um, but, but his poise in standing in there and delivering the football, uh, despite what's coming at him, is, is huge. Speaking of tight ends, uh, Joshua Wilhite had a big mm -hmm. game. He had a couple of touchdown grabs, a really nice one in the back corner of the end zone. Uh, what does he bring to the table in the passing game? And we know he can block, but what, what does he bring to the table that allows him to be effective in the, in the air game specifically? He's a tough, tough kid that has uh, embraced coaching um, all the way down to fundamentals. Um, so he's always been a physical guy. Uh, he's really uh, tried to hone in his uh, catching skills. Um, that catch in the corner of the end zone where he got his foot down in addition to making a great catch was – a uh, great throw by Steber and then a great catch by him and getting his foot down. Uh, he's really come a long way, and we've got um, high expectations for him moving forward. In the running game, uh, able to break a couple of long ones, but not a, uh, it, there were some short ones as well in there. There, there was not a lot of in-between. What, what was kind of your assessment of the ground game in that game on Friday? Uh, went uh, somewhat as expected. Uh, they, they were bigger than we were, more physical. Um, 
honestly more talented as it comes down to the paper, you know, the, the rosters one, one versus the other. Um, so we knew that if we could keep leaning on them, we would pop some stuff later in the game. Uh, so those three yard gains in the first half ended up popping in the third quarter. Um, so uh, what we expect our guys to do, be grinders, um, you know, mine and coal, like, like they like to say, uh, chopping wood. And, uh, you know, eventually those things are going to start popping for bigger chunks like Nate did later in the third. Yeah, and then you look at uh, Marion Horn, who, again, able to get in the game on offense some and, and be effective. Uh, what is his best use moving forward? Because you've, you've lined him up in, in a lot of areas, or is it or is that his best use, that he can kind of show up anywhere on the field? I think it's, uh, it's a mixture of what we're doing and trying to find all the ways we can get him the ball and balancing, uh, I think, like we talked about last week, uh, rep counting him. Um, you know, we, we can't overuse him. Um, which especially right now, while it's hot, we've got to be very uh -huh. cautious of what we're what we're doing. But at the same time, he's got to touch the football because when he touches the football, he's explosive. It's Broken Arrow Tiger head football coach Josh Blankenship. We'll be back with more in just a moment. This is Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib. Finding your happy place is something special and different for everyone. You probably already know where to find yours, and TTCU Federal Credit Union can help you get there. Talk with our team. We'll give you the tools to build the financial future you want. So wherever your happy place finds you, TTCU will meet you there. TTCU Federal Credit Union. Life is better in balance. Welcome back to Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib. I'm Adam Hildebrand, alongside Tiger Football head coach Josh Blankenship. And coach, uh, let's, let's flip over to the defensive side a little bit. What did you see from that unit over the course of that game on Friday? Uh, sound uh, football as far as being where they were supposed to be for the majority of the game. Uh, again, kind of the theme um, was it took us too long to settle in. Uh, once we settled in, uh, we had guys around the football that needed to be there. Um, you know, their first touchdown was a little freakish. Uh, <laughs> you know, we stripped the ball. Uh, it bounces a funny way. They scoop it up and score. But uh, for the most part, we've got guys where they need to be. Uh, we've got to tackle better, better in space, especially against those really explosive athletes that we're going to see. Yeah, you intercepted uh, one, two in that game, uh, and then had that one that got that you knocked free that the tight end ended up picking up in, in kind of right. a, a wonky play. But it, it seems like this defense as a group uh, is is good at trying to get around the football and, and take it away. They are doing a, a great job of putting themselves in position. we got to do a better job of finishing. Um, you know, uh, we've had a couple of moments with the turnovers that we have had. Uh, but we've had other opportunities uh, where we've had turnover opportunities that you know, have bounced a funny way or, uh, you know, we, we'd like to put ourselves in position to be able to scoop those up. We talked a little bit about on the other side of the ball, union size up front. They had some really big size on the offensive side as well, especially on the left side of that line. As a, as a defense, how do you try to counteract that and, and, and work your way around that kind of size? I mean, they, at one point they took out a 300-pounder and put another one in. So right. that, that's, that's tough to try to work with. You know, uh, we could spend time uh, analyzing how big the opponent is, um, but what what does that, you know, what do we gain out of that? Um, you know, we're, we're going to stay focused on our guys doing their jobs, maintaining their gaps, um, getting off holds, getting off blocks, uh, and, and doing our jobs. It doesn't matter how big those guys are. Uh, I was proud of the way we battled, um, and we gotta, we've got to do a better job if we're going to put ourselves in position to win games. One thing that Union did offensively was they used a, a lot of heavy sets, a lot of motion, and, and some unique looks on the offensive side. How does seeing something like that that's that diverse early in the year help your defense moving forward? I think any diversity we can see early, um, which Union certainly uh, was. Um, I think they're still trying to find an identity as far as what they want to do uh, in addition to running the ball. They know they want to run the ball. Um, but uh, it's good for us. Um, you know, again, we talk about playoff rehearsal. You know, if we're going to see these gauntlets uh, in the playoffs, what better time than right now in non-district to see that stuff? You know, we talked some about Dietrich Moore last week, and he was on the show. Uh, this week, Makai Hanley seemed to be everywhere on the football field defensively. Uh, what does he bring to the table as a player? Uh, he's explosive, uh, extremely athletic. He had a great offseason uh, in the weight room. Uh, the preparation he's put in uh, for this season – uh, you know, your expectations go up because of what we saw in the offseason. So uh, for him to be able to produce like he did was a was an awesome thing to see. 
Those guys in the in the back seven in particular, as a group, uh, would you describe them as athletic, smart, all of the above? It, when they're trying to decide whether they're going after the run of the pass, you know, reading plays, things like that, what, what do what do they do well as a group? Uh, they're coachable. Um, I think that's the best thing. Um, you know, we've had a lot of turnover. We had a bunch of uh, of our injuries or cramps or whatever we saw in that game was in that secondary. Um, even going into this week, uh, COVID protocols and, and guys need to stay home because they were sick. Uh, it's, it's probably our thinnest spot. Um, so coachability is critical. Uh, you put a new guy there, maybe a guy that was playing linebacker, and now all of a sudden he's playing free safety or vice versa, uh, moving guys around. Um, them being able to take their coaching and, and put themselves uh, where they're supposed to be so they can make a play uh, has been critical. And, and those guys, that's, that's their greatest asset is their coach building. You know, you mentioned COVID protocols, and that's something that we have not talked about as much this year. Last year, obviously, it was it was focused on all the time. Uh, it's still around. <laughs> How do you feel like the the guys are handling? Because that's you know, sixteen to eighteen year old kids. That's a long time to be focused on something like a pandemic yep. and trying to stay safe so that you can stay on the football field. How have they handled that this year? Uh, they um, have an unbelievable year of adaptability that they've learned. Uh, so it's kind of uh, ingrained in them that it is what it is and we're going to adapt next man up kind of mentality. Uh, so that's already there. Um, but like you said, the, you know, it's, it maybe isn't as, uh, in our face, uh, COVID wise, uh, but it's still a reality and we're still dealing with it. Um, you know, guys that need to stay home in the middle of the week, uh, you know, next man up mentality. And these guys are used to that. It's Broken Arrow Tiger head football coach Josh Blankenship. We'll be back with more in just a moment. This is Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib. Recently, you've had to put your life on hold, and we're with you in this. At Ascension St. John, we're now open for appointments, and we are fully prepared for your safety in our care. As we open our doors again, our doctors, nurses, and care teams will continue to wear personal protective equipment. We've taken even more steps to clean and stringently disinfect all areas. We will maintain distancing in our waiting rooms and will continue to limit visitors. And we will still screen all staff to protect their health and yours. Our emergency rooms are here 24 seven. Please do not delay care. We're still delivering babies and performing surgeries. And we're open for your appointments from specialists in surgical care to routine care and health screenings. Ask us about virtual visits. Ascension St. John continues to care for you as we have been for almost a century. Thank you for trusting us. Welcome back to Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib. Adam Hildebrandt back with you and joined now by Broken Arrow senior lineman Nick Fuller. And Nick, we're, we're just a couple of weeks into what is uh, your senior year. How do you feel like you guys as a unit have played so far on the offensive line? Uh, as a unit on the offensive line, I feel like we've came a long way from where we were uh, preseason and even spring ball but we still got a lot of way to go we're just focused on moving those guys up front and hopefully creating creases for them running backs to make a cut what uh obviously there's new coaching staff this year what changed for you guys scheme wise what, what did you have to learn what what are you doing differently than you have in years past offensively uh a lot of stuff is kind of built on what we were doing last year like the outside zone the power except we're changing focus on what we like to run more uh protection wise a little bit different but and then, the, of course, obviously, the RPOs we like to run, those are great to get the defenses moving and give us cuts for running backs and just deep shots. You know, Griffin Stever was a guy who was helping you block a year ago, and now, now he's behind you guys, and you guys are protecting him. Uh, what's that been like having him move back there and, and work with him in, a, in kind of a different capacity? Uh, it's been great. Uh, Griffin trusts us a lot up front. We've known him for a while, especially when he's been blocking in the trenches with us. And we know he could take a shot, so that's why we love those QB runs. And but we will protect him at all costs. This is Broken Arrow senior lineman Nick Fuller. Nick, uh, what what is something that the the standard fan who hasn't been you know in that uh, film room with the offensive line group? What what's something that they might not know about playing O line that that you'd like them to know? Uh, it's it's a grind, really. You're just a chop wood guy. Come every day, same thing. You're always mining coal, like Coach Pruitt likes to say. Just on a steady pace. You're never an up and down guy. You got to stay steady. What are some of the personal goals that you have for the rest of the season? Well, I mean, I think everyone wants to, you know, get to that state championship. But I'd like to just improve upon every week, 
notice what I'm doing bad the week before and just fix it the next week. That's Broken Arrow senior lineman Nick Fuller. We'll be back with more in just a moment. This is Inside Tiger Football brought to you by Rib Crib. Just a reminder, there will come a time when they can no longer share a bedroom. That's why we have a complete array of home loans, so that dream of more space can come true. Right on time. First National Bank of Broken Arrow. The right balance. Welcome back one more time to Inside Tiger Football brought to you by Rib Crib. I'm Adam Hildebrand alongside Josh Blankenship. And Josh, this is, as I'm sure you knew when you took the job, the week that a lot of people around uh, this part of the state have been looking forward to. Uh, Broken Arrow and Owasso, you get to match up across the sidelines from your dad. Uh, let's let's first talk about uh, what he has taught you growing up through football. Obviously, you grew up around football. What did your dad teach you about the game and and, and subsequently about life through this game? Uh, uh, life, almost everything, uh, was taught through football, um, which is a, a really neat thing now being a coach, because that's, you know, what I have the opportunity to do with, with our players. Um, you know, as a coach, uh, probably learned a lot more through osmosis. I mean, just being around the, the coach's office locker room, um, you know, I don't know how many conversations we've had where it was about coaching. It's more been sharing stories, swapping stories and, uh, comparing notes, so to speak. Okay. So it, was this a game that when you took the job, you were looking forward to or dreading? Neither. Um, and I know that isn't good fodder for what everybody <laughs> wants to talk about, but it's, uh, you know, I'm so focused on what we're trying to do at Broken Arrow. Uh, you know, the last thing I'm thinking about is, you know, the fact that we're playing at Mansfield legacy or we're playing at union or we're playing a Wasso or that my dad's the coach at a Wasso. Like I don't really go there. Um, and it's not even intentional. It's just, I'm so focused on our guys and what we need to get done that it's, it's so secondary to me. So with that in mind, what's it going to take for broken arrow to be the Wasso this week? Uh, we we've challenged the guys. We've got to play a mentally perfect game. Um, you know, physically, uh, we have the tools, um, you know, talent wise, we have what we need. It's about, uh, uh, being mature in the moment, uh, handling the big environment, and doing our jobs play by play, and so it's a mental challenge for us this week. Yeah, expecting another good environment this week up at Owasso. That's Broken Arrow head coach Josh Blankenship. I'm Adam Hildebrand. Thanks for joining us for Broken Arrow Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib. <laughs> 